Okay, today we're here with Rob, who has Lou Gehrig's disease and has a trach, and so therefore he cannot move and cannot speak. Um, and he's going to demonstrate how he uses a computer with his eyes to communicate and uh, get access to the internet and Skype and play games, etc. Um, this is a technology that uses infrared beams, as you can see at the bottom there, that focus on his irises. Um, and the little green lights on either side of the camera lens just let you know that the infrared beams are focused on his iris. So right now we're doing calibration, so he's just going to calibrate the system. Um, he focuses on the bull's eye and then blinks his eyes and that will just calibrate the system. There's nine points of calibration here. And this is just something that has to be done every time you set up the computer. See him blinking his eyes. Let's go back and have a look at what's going on on the screen. Now there's also a 16 point calibration but it usually it's not necessary. The 9 point is, is accurate enough. It just takes a minute or two to get that set up. I'll just show you once this calibration is finished what you do when you uh, put the computer in front of the person how you just have to get the crosshairs focused. Okay, it says it'll tell you whether it's good or bad. Now if you have a look here you can see there are crosshairs in his eyes. So that just lets you know that his face is aligned up properly and that uh, the infrared beams are reading his irises. Okay, can we exit out of this and go to the mainframe please? Now he should be able to exit this himself. Okay. Um, and exit again. Okay. Okay, so this is the main page. Um, let's first go to this is where you have um, your keyboard, um, set phrases, um, your home controls, which control your television, etc email, internet, Skype, and games, etc. Um, let's first go to uh, your home controls, Dad. Okay, so let's go to TV. Okay, now you can see, let me just focus on this. This is like a normal remote control that has been pre-programmed for his TV. And I'm just going to move this back so you can see the TV there. Okay, can you put the TV on? Okay, um, can you change the channel? Okay, so you can, can you come back again to the last channel? Okay, can you put the TV off please? Okay, now there is a little bit of a delay between um, issuing the commands and the, the TV actually reacting to them. It's not as fast as the remote control. Um, so in this way you can control the TV, you can control the DVD player, with the exception of the putting the disc in, obviously someone has to do that for you. Um, it would be great if they had technology that could put, it, put the disc in for you. Um, and you can also use this to control lights um, and fans in the house as well, and the radio in the house. Can we exit this and go to the main uh, frame again please? And the, the thing here is to try not to move your head when you're operating the thing because that uh, gets your eyes out of alignment again. It's basically just move your eyes and not your head. Um, and then exit again on back. Okay, now can we go to, um, let's go to keyboard. Okay, now this is a keyboard where he can type messages. Um, it's a t talking keyboard and it's QWERTY, so that's alphabetical. Um, can we type hello? Okay, so as he types each letter, you'll see that there are words that pop up at the top um, at the top uh, set of uh, spaces. Now that's uh, word recognition software. So what that does, it, it helps you um, um, instead of having to type every single word out, you can type a letter in and it'll bring up a whole lot of words that you've used before beginning with that letter. And obviously it becomes more accurate as you type more letters in and so then you can choose a word um, and 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 
and type that in instead of having to type the word out letter for letter. Um, okay, you can see if he's writing his name. Okay. Hello, my name is Rob. Okay, can we? Okay, so that's the, he chose the talk button. Um, you can either choose the talk button or when you put a period in, then the, uh, the sentence will be spoken out. Can we save this in phrases? Okay, so he's going to go to his phrases. Can we go to page eight? And then in the top left hand corner, if you can save it there, please. So he chooses that and then it saves it there. So that's saved there now. Okay, can we exit the keyboard? Go back to the main, main frame again. Uh, how about uh, email? Okay, so you'll see Google will come up and at the bottom there's a keyboard there. Can you, let me just zoom in there, can you click on that email button there? The bottom uh, left. Okay. Okay, so then his email provider will come up. Um, it just takes a while. I don't know why it's not coming up. Just click the email button again. It should have come up. Okay. So that's his email provider. Now you see there he has to put in his name and password. Now obviously that's very difficult to do with your eyes. So there is another button next to that. If you can type that, which just says sign in. So if you can click on that sign in button. It's right at the bottom next to email. Okay, then what it does is it automatically types in the password and your name and then you can go to your email that way. So you don't have to type that in. So that gives you access to your email account. Okay, can we go back to the main page? Now you can see at the bottom, at the right hand, top there is a key which is back and you just click on that and that'll take you back to your main page again okay can you manage it okay sometimes because the person moves their head they the eyes are 